now had my Arcade 1UP Marvel Pinball Machine for a few days, and I'd like to give you a full review of the product from a consumer that paid for this machine with his own hard-earned cash. So keep in mind that this is a production model, version 1. I would first like to mention that so far my family and I are really enjoying the machine. However, the product is not without its issues. My purpose here is neither to persuade you to purchase a machine, nor is it to tell you that you should not purchase a machine. Each of us have different households with different wants and desires from a virtual pinball machine. What may be a deal breaker for you could be something that is inessential to me. My goal here is to inform you the best that I can so that you can come to your own conclusion. With that being said, let's get started. We'll start with the build process, which is very similar in procedure and time required to get out of the box and completely set up and playable to that of any other standard arcade one-up cabinet. It should take you anywhere between 45 minutes to an hour and a half at the most. If you have not purchased any of the arcade one-up cabinets before, then think of it as being similar to IKEA furniture. Probably even a bit simpler of a process to be honest. As far as the appearance goes, this is where the machine really shines. The machine stands out in the room, and as much as I love my outrun cabinet, I have to say that the Marvel Pinball Machine steals the room, at least visually speaking it is. The chrome finish legs, and especially the chrome finish around the tabletop really elevate this table to the next level. The chrome trim around the back stand is of cheaper quality, but still looks really well nonetheless. And I wouldn't mind seeing Arcade One use this trim on some cabinets going forward. Arcade 1UP has built its brand on licensing and product design. They did a really solid job making a gorgeous looking machine here. And if you are a Marvel fan, this would really make an excellent addition to a Marvel themed room or corner of your house. Now let's take a look at the dimensions of this bad boy. So for the width, the front top we have 17 and a half inches. Now the front bottom from outside of the foot to the outside of the foot we got 22 inches. The back top we got 20 and 5 8 inches and the back bottom from outside foot to outside foot is again 22 inches. The height in the front is 36 and a half inches. The total height in the rear is 59 and a half inches. The depth from the wall to the plunger if you have it slid up against the wall is 39 and a half inches. For comparison if you put it next to an outrun sit down cabinet and you slide the bench all the way in, the outrun sit-down still protrudes further out from the wall by a few inches. The light-up back glass is 18 and a half inches by 11 and a half inches. The LCD score screen is the 7 and a half inch screen, which in dimension-wise it's 7 inches by 3 inches. You get two 3-inch speakers. You can adjust the height of the machine by about 1 and a half inches. This gives it a total height in the front of 38 inches and a total height in the back of 61 inches. I'm 5'11 and I find the machine perfectly comfortable playing at its base height without rising it. The twins are 51 inches tall. It can play and see the play field standing on their feet, but they much prefer playing while sitting on a stool. My daughter is 46 inches tall, and she too can see the entire play field from her toes, but obviously a stool here is much more preferred as well. As far as the screen size for the play field, you get a 23.8 inch LCD screen, and with the recessed bezel it does give the table a solid sense of depth. I know the screen size is a huge concern for some people, being that there are other virtual pinball tables with larger screens. Screen size has not been an issue for me on any of my other Arcade 1UP products as I've done several modifications to some of these cabinets but installing a 20 inch monitor has never been something that I feel that is needed. However, I do think that people who prefer the larger screen size on cabinets will have a problem here but that will all really come down to personal preference. The only real issue that I have at this particular size screen is that the ball does seem pretty small. And this is due to the fact that it needs to be smaller for scaling purposes. Regardless, the screen size is large enough for me personally, and I think that going bigger would have been a bad idea for this particular machine, 
and I will tell you why in a minute. This brings us to the graphics and resolution. The PCB that Arcade One Up use on this machine only outputs to at a max of 720p. And this is by far the worst decision that they made in the building of this machine. I'm assuming that this was to cut costs, but the result is that the PCB board is essentially the kryptonite for this machine. I know by now that everyone is aware of the jagged edges on the flippers, but it doesn't end with the flippers. It's hard to see on camera unless you get close to the screen, but as I scroll, you will notice these same jagged edges across the entire playfield. Aside from the jagged edges, the characters themselves appear pixelated and muddy. Looking at Iron Man here, you can see just the contrast in the red coloring used on this sprite compared to the red on the background of the table itself. These same issues plague all 10 tables. Some tables are worse than others, but it's widespread. I've heard the argument that you can't notice these during gameplay. And number one, that's not true. You may not be focusing on them, but once you see all these jagged edges, you really can't unsee them. And also, when you have family or friends over and watching each other play, then it's something that will stand out to everyone not playing. Now does this ruin the machine for me personally? No, it does not. I mean, I play a lot of retro games and I tend to weigh gameplay over graphics. And to be fair, it's not something that most kids or casual gamers will pick up on either. So many of you will probably be completely fine with it. However, I do know that graphics and resolution are more important to some of us than it is to others. And if these graphical insufficiencies are, are this glaring to me, then I know to some they will be absolutely damning. I do think that in 2021 for a new product to be released at this price point with this poor resolution, it is a definite issue when you have similar products at similar price points that do output at 1080p. This is also why I said earlier that I was glad that they didn't go with the larger screen size because these resolution and graphical issues would have been much worse on a larger screen. I will also say that this is the worst aspect of the machine. So if you can live with the graphics and resolution, then it does get better from here on out. All right, let's move to where the rubber meets the road, the actual gameplay. I'm happy to say that the gameplay is overall pretty solid. They did definitely sacrifice graphics and resolution in favor of gameplay. I did notice some slight lag in the ball movement when there were multiple balls on the table, but overall I have to say that the gameplay was pretty solid. They do have solenoids in the flipper buttons, and while they do the job, it does seem like they went a little cheap here. And it is a little concerning that Cool Toy, who has the making of this video, has the only Marvel unit that I know of that has been in the wild for a few months now, and his solenoids already failed on him. You can make the argument that he has a review unit and not a production unit. Regardless, that's a 100% fail rate on the solenoids of units that have been in the wild for just a few months now. Could be a rare occurrence, but it's worrisome nonetheless. The flippers themselves show very little latency, and I'm pretty satisfied with their performance overall. Here's a clip of me hitting the flipper button, and then the flipper button itself actually responding. Now I will slow that down to four times the speed, and even here you can notice that the latency is not much, so overall, they perform pretty well. Now big bonus here is nudging you can leverage during gameplay. Arcade went up and installed accelerometers, meaning that you can shake or nudge the machine and it will have an effect on the ball. This is a technique that enhances your experience, gameplay, and especially score if you are able to take advantage of this. This doesn't work perfect as there is much more latency here than there is with the flippers. However, I managed that the physics to get this to work properly is pretty complex, so all things considered, I think this works really well and it adds a lot of enjoyment to the table. Now on the flip side, there are no nudge buttons here. Nudge buttons are what you would normally use to play virtual pinball on a console to get the nudging effect. And the fact that they don't have them here is a huge problem in my opinion. 
The table is very sturdy, weighing in at over 90 pounds. This is a good thing, and don't get me wrong, but nudging the table for smaller children or even some adults is not realistic, especially when the nudging isn't 100% responsive. I get that most people would prefer the actual nudging over the buttons themselves, but they need to have the option of either or. Hopefully in version 2 of these pinball tables they will add nudging buttons. Another big bonus here is the analog plunger, the arcade one-up design for this machine. I know that this is something that they spent a lot of time with and I have to say that they did a really good job. The fact that it's analog allows you to take skill shots with the ball when you are launching into play. The harder you pull the plunger, then the faster the ball will be propelled and vice versa. The 7.5 inch or 7x3 inch LCD score screen gets the job done, but it is really bare bones. It's really hard to utilize it for anything during gameplay due to the lack of size and color. It can be helpful while gameplay is halted, but during gameplay it's not very functional. The arcade 1UP Marvel Pinball Machine comes with a total of 10 tables. Spider-Man, Civil War, Marvel's Woman of Power A-Force, X-Men, Fantastic Four, Thor, Ghost Rider, Wolverine, Venom, and Fear Itself. Out of the 10 tables, some are pretty good and some personally aren't very fun Civil War. I've been uploading 10 to 20 minutes of gameplay for each table, so if you want a closer look at any table specifically, then I will put links of those videos in the description as they are uploaded. Now while the light up back class does look really nice, it's a big setback in my opinion that the artwork doesn't change to match the table you are playing on. Now while the table's selection is alright, the 10 tables is really not enough, especially when most, if not all, other virtual pinball machines have more tables. They should have at least included all of Zen Studios marble tables because there are tables missing that people would want. The lack of Wi-Fi in the machine also means that they will not be doing an update to add more, nor can you purchase more from an online store. The only reasons I can think of that they went with only 10 tables is because they plan on selling a version 2 machine next year or the year after with a different selection of Marvel tables. That or they were in such a rush to get the product out that they didn't have enough development time to get more than 10 tables on the machine. Either or, it's it's really a bad decision and just it's not, it's not consumer friendly in my opinion. Alright, so let's check out the sound and audio. The sound is actually really impressive. Having the two speakers pointing towards you really projects the sound well. Welcome to Asgard! Another great day for Asgard! It has a name you will know it as. I personally have no need nor desire to do an audio mod, but for those of you that do, then there are obviously ways to boost it even more. The default sound setting is almost too loud for me, even at its lowest setting. Fortunately, in the settings menu, you can adjust the music, SFX, and physics volumes. These are absolutely welcome options, as it lets you tailor your experience more to your liking. Don't like the SFX sounds? Turn them off. Music is not loud enough? Turn it up. Or turn the music and the SFX completely off and pump up the physics, physics volumes for a more traditional sound experience. honest I was pretty happy with the overall sound until I found these options and they really improved my experience with the table. The main problem with the audio is that there is no visual display on the screen when adjusting the sound using the knob on the front panel. That and there seems to be times when adjusting it in this way is unresponsive and laggy. Not sure what the malfunction is here but both of these issues need to be addressed going forward. I really do like the overall user interface of the machine as well as the settings menu. It is really easy to hop in and adjust the music, SFX, or physics volumes. You can also toggle the ball trails on and off, as well as the solenoids. In the pop-up scoring, you can turn off completely, 
or adjust the parameters for when the pop-up occurs. There are table instructions for each game and some are pretty lengthy. Referring to them is easy and convenient to have. Navigating through the carousel of tables is seamless using the flippers. I really do like having the, the local high scores posted above each game as you scroll. It would have been really nice to have had Wi-Fi to access online leaderboards, but we will have to put that in the suggestion box. Alright, so what are my impressions overall of the Arcade 1UP Marvel Pinball Machine? Well, let me start by saying that I do overall like the product. I do think that it's good, but not a great addition to your game room. It is something in your game room that even non-gamers will gravitate to and find enjoyment out of. I think that it does a decent job of giving you an at-home pinball experience at the fraction of the price of a real pinball machine. It also comes with less maintenance than a real pinball machine. Now I paid $550 plus tax for my table and I honestly feel like that is too much. While they got a lot right here, they also missed on a lot of things and also cut a lot of corners to save on costs. With no Wi-Fi, no nudge buttons, low-end solenoids, only 10 tables, small playfield screen, the absence of real glass covering the playfield screen, which I really actually is not that big of an issue to me, but I know a lot of people are not happy about that. Um, and subpar graphics and resolution. I really feel like this product should be around $500 tops. And the problem is they are moving in the wrong direction as it seems that they are going to be selling this for $599 instead of $549 from here on out. Now I don't regret my purchase, but I do feel like I overpaid being completely honest. Now if you are waiting on your pre-order to arrive, then I actually think you will enjoy your purchase. And to be fair, I think that the Marvel is probably the least desirable of the three current tables on the market. But at the same time, you will probably circle back to agreeing with me on some things that I've been critical of the machine about. If you are locked out of the pre-ordering process, then I think you may want to take a step back and actually weigh your options. There are a lot of virtual pinball options available out there. There are some a little cheaper, some a little more expensive, and then always the option to build your own virtual pinball machine. I've seen enough of this machine to know that it's not a must buy. Now if you look at the other options out there, you may come to find that one of the three arcade one-up pinball machines is the best option for you, and that's perfectly fine. I personally haven't had hands on any other tables, however I am waiting on a pre-order for Nat Games Legends pinball machine. And when it arrives, I will give you a breakdown and comparison of the two products. In the meantime, I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Later. Asgard visited. Choose your destiny. This is the battle I have waited eons to behold. The battle that shall finally see the end of the mighty Thor! Whose vile spirit now gives thee life, destroyer?